All right, welcome to another episode of the Esports Next podcast. It is my pleasure today, alongside with my co-host, the lovely founder of the Esports Trade Association, Megan Van Petten, to welcome Leonie Leonard, who is the Partnerships Manager for the Game Hearse. Thank you for being here with us today. Hey, how's it going? Happy to be here. It's going pretty well. I think we're uh, mostly recovered from the conference. Megan, would you say... Yeah, I, back. I would say, I would say we recovered. It was so fun. I miss <laughs> everyone. Is. I always miss everyone when I'm the home host town because y'all leave. And I'm like, <laughs> That's true. I'm like a mom at the window. I'm like. <laughs> With the planes flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are, uh, boy, we just had a wonderful conference and so thrilled with everybody who was, uh, so kind to participate, to sponsor, to speak, to attend. Um, and we absolutely want to um, highlight you and the Game Hers. Why don't you start us out with helping us understand what exactly is Game Hers? What is your mission? What are you accomplishing for the community there? No problem. For, before, I, before I start that, I do just want to say a massive thank you to both of you for the event in Chicago last week. It was absolutely amazing. Um, it was definitely one of the most valuable conferences that I've been at in terms of meeting different people and the way it was laid out and the panels and everything just, it was incredible. So thank you and well done, because <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. Um, the so the Game Hers is a global community for women in gaming. We are a media platform. Um, our community kind of spans all across the globe of um, female femme identifying folks who are interested in some aspect of gaming or, or are involved in some aspect of gaming. So um, we are, you know, North America based um our two founders are both based in new york so rebecca and verda um we launched in march 2020 so you know the same time that that covid quite some timing there <laughs> right yeah the same time that covid popped its ugly head um we we were born and it's funny because obviously you know launching any sort of you know business or company in, in times like that is a little bit scary, but in hindsight, there probably wasn't a better time for us to launch an organization like ours. Um, it was a time when, you know, people were isolating, people were spending a lot of time alone, struggling to, you know, get by. And our organization kind of created that opportunity for women to meet other women who were, you know, had the same interests, like the same games, um, and it was just a, a fun way to make friends. Um, our mission is to really kind of empower women to go forth and do what they want to do without, um, you know, with, without kind of facing the typical barriers that come with being a woman in this space. Um, gaming is such a, well, I think it's, you know, a really inclusive community from what I've, from what I've experienced. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's, you know, it's common knowledge that it can be quite a male dominated space at times. Sure. Um, and when we launched um, our organization, you know, there was a lot of research and things like that, that went behind the reason of why we were going to launch the game Hearse. And one of those crazy statistics that came to life was that out of all the gamers across the globe, 46% of them identified as female. Um, that to us was mind blown, right? Like, obviously we knew there was a ton of women in the gaming world and women that loved games and played games and worked in the gaming industry. We mm. didn't, however, see or think that that number was going to be so high. And I think it's because you don't see women, I, 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 we, we don't think that you see women represented, you know, as much as what that statistic says. Um, so then it was, you know, it kind of let, one thing led to another and it was like, well, well, what can we do to make sure that women are represented? If women wake, make up such a high percentage of gamers, then what can we do to kind of support and help um, make sure that they're getting the opportunities that they deserve and that they are represented in the industry in a meaningful way? Um, and then that just led us to do all the things, all the things that we're doing, that we're doing now. Yeah, it's. It's so cool that at a time when people needed community, 
possibly mm -hmm. more than ever and the only access was online yeah there emerged the game hers and not just broad community but very specific and underrepresented community right and um i've taught uh, unfortunately obviously gaming esports is is very online and um it's kind of like the twitter test right the the toxicity like i always say the problem with twitter is you can't punch someone in the face when they say someone's stupid you know it, <laughs> so you're like i you will no that is so funny. I cannot believe you just said that. I will definitely be the first to tell you that Twitter is not my thing. I tried to get into it. Sure. I started using it a while ago. I haven't posted anything in the longest time because I don't know. I feel like, you know, there's not much consequence for what you say on Twitter and a lot, right. you know, it's, I don't know. It's like rumors spread very fast on Twitter. Yeah. Um, I'm, not everyone, obviously, but some people are very quick to jump on the kind of bandwagon situation and, you know, take something that they see as fact when in fact it's so far from the truth. And then one thing just leads to another, something goes viral and then everyone's, you know, it's, I like LinkedIn. LinkedIn's my favorite. <laughs> I love you on that as well. <laughs> yeah. And I've talked to, um, friends of mine who are female gamers and you know obviously there's a there's a whole focus on equal representation right where um, it's very important like let's get women on the stage let's provide the same access opportunities and everything but one thing a friend shared with me that I was actually surprised to hear she said John a lot of times it's really intimidating to go into those spaces especially when you know there's been this toxicity or or, or these other things she said what we want at least to start or a good amount of female gamers is our own community. We just want this safe place to come together where we know we can share our passion and we know no one's going to, you know, make fun of us or exclude us when they hear our voice on the microphone or things like that. Can you share a little bit about just how kind of the power of bringing together a group that is not just yeah. communal, but is safe. Yeah. For the members and as well? I, for sure and one thing that I do want to say as well obviously we are an organization that is in place to support women in gaming we don't hate men we love men <laughs> you know like this is not an anti-male organization or anything like that and I think that you know there, you can create a safe space right for women in gaming but something that we don't try and encourage is this kind of like Met or women versus men kind of attitude right we want women to be able to play alongside men and I think that this kind of brings it to like the collegiate kind of high school level as well like you talked about you know some women feel intimidated to enter these spaces and there's two things about that right women don't want to enter um you know a, a, a space that you know, they might be the only women in the women in the room, right? I think even yeah. outside of gaming in any other situation in the world, right? If I was to walk into like a bar at the weekend and I was the only woman in the bar, it would feel quite uncomfortable, right? You want to be like it's human nature to want to be able to be surrounded by people who like that are like you. Um so I think that, you know, nobody wants to be the only one. And then, of course, they don't want to experience the kind of toxicity and harassment that you hear about that women face in the gaming industry. And I think that, especially at the collegiate and kind of high school level, we're having so many conversations at the moment with colleges and universities all across the country and kind of gaming professionals that are working in the high school, even the middle school space. And that mm -hmm. constant question is always, how do we get more girls involved and I think that obviously there's a number of way to, ways to do that, right? There's not a there's not one answer for that question. Um, that, you know, hire female staff in the gaming programs, you know, ensure that your marketing materials are also kind of attractive to females, right? It doesn't have to be someone talked about this actually on one of your on one of your panels last week. Um, oh, I think it was the lady that worked at the University of Chicago, Ash Ashlyn Sparrow. And she talked about their, you know, their logo being pink and things like that. You know, it, obviously it doesn't have to be pink, but you can make yeah. it less masculine to send that message out to your female students that, you know, this isn't a guy's thing, right? It's not a boys only club. And I think that right. by having more girls involved in the gaming programs from those younger ages, 
it lets the boys be familiar that having girls in gaming is normal. It's not out of the ordinary. And it lets them experience sure. what it's like to play alongside girls from a young age so that when they do go into, you know, teenage years or adulthood even, they're probably going to be, you know, less likely to project that harassment or like toxic behavior to towards women because they're going to be already familiar with it. It's not going to be out of the ordinary for them. Um, right. So I think that that's really, really important. But yeah, we're, we're trying to do as much as, as much as we can so that, you know, women who do play online and you know experience whatever they experience when they are playing that they do have a safe space to come back to and maybe discuss what happened or or get advice from other women that may have gone through the same things um we launched an app last year and our app is specifically for women in gaming to you know hang out with each other ask each other questions ask if anyone wants to like hey does anybody want to play rocket league in 30 minutes and you know it's it's a way for them to find other people to play with but then also to have another have a group of women that are you know more than likely feeling the same way or having the same experiences um yeah and then the discord obviously the discord is also a, a great place for for women to come in and find others and chat you know and hang out that's wonderful. Um, a question I have actually for both of you, because Megan, I think that you can uh, chime in on this as well, is one thing that's really powerful for underrepresented groups is seeing people who look like you to help you understand, hey, this is possible, mm -hmm. right? Like there, there's times where, um, you know, if you don't see any women on the Call of Duty stage or <laughs> or Rocket League stage or what have you, maybe it doesn't go through your mind or maybe you have this maybe even a subconscious feeling of that's not possible or 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 that's not a path I can go down I'm curious for each of you what has been your experience when you see women breaking that glass ceiling um and what is the effect that has on you Megan I'll go with you first I I love love sharing the table with a woman, with anyone underserved. Um, boy, when I started in fantasy sports, when we would see a woman, we would run to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not joking. It would be like, you know, and, and that was it. That was our introduction. It We were a very small minority. What was interesting at just in this conference that we just had was my old chair, from the Fantasy Sports Trade Association said to me, now this is the melting pot at our mm -hmm. conference. He said, this is an example oh. of a well-diversified group. And when I looked around, it was like, yeah. And we tried so hard because I was the executive director of that association. And it was just, it didn't look like we tried as hard as we did. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, and that's and it still doesn't I still go to those meetings and mm -hmm. I know they're trying so we're very fortunate I'll say that I'll say that John we are very 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 fortunate um what do you say Leonie, yeah. What's, yeah what's been the effect on you seeing other women rise and showing you it's possible it's been amazing and I think that like even though we only launched three years ago so I've only been working with the gamers for the past three years, I will say that the more and more I go to like events or conventions and things like that, like PAX, TwitchCon, it's amazing to see how many women attend those events. Um, and I think that as the years go by, it's just it's just getting more and more. Like I would never consider it to be like a male dominated industry. You know, when you go to these types of events, you, it's there's mm -hmm. a, a lot of women in attendance. And I think that you know, whatever inspires me, it's also my job working for the game hers is to ensure that we're doing what we can to also inspire the younger generation, you know, the, the younger yeah. girls coming up through through school and, you know, believe in the misconceptions or the stereotypes that gaming's for boys and there's no jobs in gaming, and you, you know, it's a waste of time and things like that. It's That's why it's so important for us as an organization to host our amazing award show um and, and we can talk about that more but obviously the whole point of our award show is to highlight the success that women are having in the gaming industry 
and you know it's women from all over the world it's women that all look different from each other they're all different ages you know different backgrounds different races it's such a diverse group of women so for the younger generation to be able to look up to these women and say oh my god wow like she you know got this award or she does this job and it's that's one of the best possible ways that we can think of to encourage those younger girls to believe that they can go and do whatever it is that they want to do. And one of the ways too that you support your community is by celebrating them through your awards, right? Yeah. And Megan at the ESCA conference, boy, Megan told me she's she was right again. I think that's the second time you've been right, Megan. Uh, hilarious. <laughs> We have a little joke there every because uh Megan is right quite often and it's funny. Uh it's it's frustrating. It's like an inside me. joke. But an inside um joke. she said, John, the most fulfilling thing to do is to celebrate people. Mm -hmm. You know, and awards are a fantastic way to do that. And so you are celebrating women in impactful ways. Tell us about the uh the Game of Hers Awards and tell us also where can we watch how when can we tune in yeah um so the game hers awards is a it's an annual an annual event that we host every year to celebrate women in gaming like that's basically you know the main the main goal um i i, I was talking to megan earlier about this because every year up until this point we've had to do our show virtually just for you know multiple different reasons um this year we are super excited because we are um We've confirmed that our next show is going to be held in Atlanta, um, Friday the first oh. of March, and we are going to have an in-person audience this time. So yay! <laughs> and we just ugh, we couldn't is be this more... the first in-person audience. This is the first kind of in-person audience at the awards. Congratulations! Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Thank you. I know it. You know, it's it's something that that's it's always been our our goal is to you know obviously. We've we've created the show year after year and it's just gotten bigger and better every year. But the final goal was to have an in-person audience there to experience what, you know, hopefully what will be the biggest night of the year for women in gaming. Um mm -hmm. and we're we're finally at that point. So we're kind of like, yay, we did it. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's Friday the first of March, first day of women's history month. So there's not really a better time to celebrate women in gaming. Um, you know, and it's that's that's just you know it's it's what we do it's you know we we have all these kind of different systems in place you know like career boot camps and a collegiate program and things like that that are all kind of working as a machine to to help in different areas you know lift women up and encourage them to go and do all the incredible things that they can do in gaming um mm -hmm. whether it's you know in careers or just for fun um, and to, to be able to celebrate them is is amazing and to be able to get their communities involved as well and hear all the different stories of you know why someone nominated someone else what is it that that person does that makes you look up to them or makes you think that they deserve this award um, and then to get the reactions I like I, I'm kind of biased I always say out of all the events that we do the awards is definitely my favorite it's mm -hmm. it's just such a huge positive like it's such a good event and it's it's always fun for me to hear the reactions of people that get nominated and see what it means to them um you know like we get a lot of just really really nice responses from people about what the awards does for them and it's you know people use a lot of the winners of our previous awards you know they put that on their on their resumes they put it in their taglines on their LinkedIn they you know award-winning cosplayer or whatever it might be in their Twitter bios so for us to be able to see how much it means to them it just makes us want to work harder to make it bigger and better than it ever could be so yeah we're so excited hopefully you guys can come and be there in person um love to Spells released soon. I'm probably telling too much because we haven't <laughs> like publicly. We can edit and post, yeah. But yeah. Um, so yeah, we're excited. That's fantastic. MVP, are you going to the, the Game Hers Awards? Well, I did put it in my calendar and I heard about it. And it was so funny because um in the green room before you arrived, 
um, Leonie was like, hey, I told everyone about the yeah. award show at Esports Next, but awesome. I forgot to ask. <laughs> oh. I, did. I literally told oh, every please, single yeah. person, like I probably told every person that I spoke to in Chicago where our next award show was going to be. And then it wasn't even until I, until I got back to New York, I was thinking, oh God, I don't know if I was supposed to tell anyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, we are public. Saleswoman public- ever. <laughs> Uh, like we're it's being announced this week or next week but yeah I think that's awesome that's great well we'll you make sure that this episode comes out after that public announcement after the announcement that's you know what, what I, you know what really I love fun. about awards is when people bring their family I just oh. can't even I love mm. that part yeah. um yeah I mean I, I could just go back to my all of the years that I've been part of awards shows decades Mm -hmm. and I can just remember, you know, different families. I remember this one story where this man said, I never graduated high school. And he was this, he built a robot that was, it was an award-winning product in manufacturing and engineering. And he said, my dad is here and this is the best day of my life. Yeah. And I was like in line, you know, shaking their hands, you know, giving them the award and they were getting at the picture. And then the dad mm-hmm. came yeah. and the dad was like, this is the best day of my life. I've never been more proud of my son, you know? And it was just like, oh. I love that. And, well, the, and his son I mean. felt like a failure. He's like, mm-hmm. I never graduated. I was the smart guy. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he made a, he made a product that, that, that was you know, completely amazing that changed manufacturing for us in our world. And uh, it's amazing how we don't realize our own accomplishments and what our families and our parents or our colleagues and, you know, yeah. the depth of this. And and we had that just last week with Charles Conroy. Yeah. And to add to that, and Leonie, to um, have you build on is I think what's really cool specifically about our space are people are being recognized for something that so many people doubted them in True. even pursuing in the first place, right? So yeah. it's not just, hey, um, I became a football player and everybody knows there's a path there where you can be rich and successful and things. It's like, stop wasting your time. Why are you doing these things? And these people persevered and have... Um, you know, just developed an expertise or had such success that I I would argue that validation can mean even more. That's John, you you hit the nail on the head there because two things, I think for a lot of, you know, people, a lot of kids, let's say like in their twenties and thirties right now that have been involved in gaming in a long time and they're just starting to kind of climb up that ladder in their careers. Sometimes it's harder for the, you know, older parents and family members to understand why are they spending so much time in gaming? Because to them, gaming is just a thing that you do for fun, right? They don't understand, you mm. know, the actual career opportunities and things like, like my, my dad would have absolutely no idea of the careers that you can do in gaming. Um, mm. You know, the, the careers that gaming could lead to. So yeah, it can be, you know, it can be quite discouraging, I suppose, if you're surrounded by people that don't believe in what it is that you're trying to do and you're kind of, you know, you've got tunnel vision, you know where you want to go, but um, but then to get an award, and what I will say is that I'll never forget kind of back before we, we were using like an actual award system and things like that, like when we were just, I think it was either our first or maybe our second award show. Um, yeah, because it was right after COVID actually. And it was my responsibility to email every single nominee to let them know they've been nominated and would you like to, you know, accept your nomination and so forth, so forth. So it was then me that was getting all the responses from the nominees back into my mailbox. And, oh God, it was like the most overwhelming thing ever in a good way um, because the responses were just so, some of them were actually really emotional. Yeah. Um, but definitely recognizing someone's, you know, someone's hard work I think 100% gives them that kind of extra like push to keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I know that I definitely got one, possibly two responses that was just like, 
oh my God, like this is the best news ever. You know, I was really starting to think, should I just give this up and go back to my like, you know, yeah. office job? Because I was, I feel like I was getting nowhere. I didn't have the energy or like the motivation to, you know, come up with new content and things like that. This has given me the biggest kind of lease of life. Yeah. And you know, like just that little bit of like recognition that someone in her community voted for her. Um, and it, yeah, it definitely yeah. kind of gave her the the push to kind of keep going. So it's definitely, you know, it's definitely valuable to recognize, highlight and celebrate, even if it's a small success, every success counts, right? That's right. Uh, steps to six. I'm a big believer in like yeah. stair steps to success. You may have your goal up here and you're here. And a lot of times we're like, I can't get there. And I'm a big believer in identifying, okay, well, what do you have today that can't get you here, but can get you to the next step? Yeah. And now that you're at this next step, you have something new, something more that can work as a launch pad or a step to get to the next one. And sometimes you can skip a step, right? Because you have so much momentum or you have such a great opportunity. But I think that's a really great way to view it. Um, I have one more question about the Game Hers, which is an aspect called Game Hers Guardians. Can you tell us what that's all about? Yep. So we are launching a program, um, I believe in September, where it's in beta testing right now, called the Game Hers Guardians. Um, this is more this this is a like an eight session course for you know parents, guardians, caretakers of the younger, the younger kiddos that are into gaming um mm. you know I think that you know I'll, some of my friends have kids and you know I, I know a lot of people that have younger kids I've got younger brothers and I know that you know when they talk about gaming my parents are just like what on earth are you talking about like they've got absolutely right. no idea what esports means what streaming means what content creation you know like the the language in the gaming world means absolutely nothing to like my dad when, when my brothers are talking about this kind of stuff um, but because more and more kids are, you know, spending more time gaming for fun, gaming, you know, in their in their school esports teams, we thought it was just really important. And we've been hearing a lot of parents say like we would just love to be able to access more information that's not so like, you know, documents and documents and documents, just mm -hmm. real time information, the kind of what we need to know to be able to understand what our kids are talking about. Mm -hmm. Um so this course is hopefully gonna help help with that and we're we're just really excited you know I think that it's it's so important for parents to understand their kids interests right if your kid was into basketball or soccer or whatever you know whatever it might be mm -hmm. gymnastics you'd kind of do what you can to you know learn about that sport and and so that you could have a conversation with them about it and kind of understand yeah. what their plan is and you know if they enjoy it so much what it is they enjoy about it and where can it potentially where can it potentially lead to like if this is something that they really want to do then you know in 10 years time what could that mean for them um so yeah we're we're really excited and we're we're just hoping that it's just going to be very beneficial to obviously guardians but also the kids i think the kids are definitely going to benefit as well from their parents knowing and understanding a little bit more um about gaming i love that it's you've really looked full circle at this whole how can you support this community from celebrating your members to enabling people to have community connections to compete and also bringing up the next generation right yeah. I guess my my last question would be what is it that you're looking forward to the most whether that's this next year or beyond uh, with the gamers that you're just like not not under NDA stuff, you know, but <laughs> you're like, I I am still looking for us to accomplish or doing this. Uh, honestly, like a bias again, but I'm just so excited for our next award show. Um, I, I mean, there's so much coming up this year. You know, obviously, I really look forward to the day that women, you know, feel confident and comfortable enough in a gaming industry where they don't need an organization like us right to be a support system you know hopefully one day that it'll all just be you know equal and everyone's treated the same and everyone's treated with respect and things like that but in in the very very near future I'm just really excited 
for the award show and to be able to celebrate all these amazing people in person with um an event that's hopefully going to be lots and lots of fun <laughs> um glitz and glitz and glam and yeah I think that again like last year just um seeing the kind of live reactions you know on twitch when people when people realized that they were a winner of one of our awards like that really meant something to us like we we're you know we launched three years ago we're we're out there we're doing as much as we can in this space and I think a lot of the times when people see our logo and you know wherever we are the game hers or the game hers team they imagine that you know it's this big big company with a headquarters office somewhere when realistically it's you know 10 women working at their kitchen tables um and obviously it's great it means we're doing something right if people imagine it to be this big thing um but when when we do something you know we put we put our whole heart and energy into what that is and the awards is definitely it's our biggest event of the year so I think like starting September right up until the award show it's you know it's all hands on deck it's not easy to put an event like that together obviously you guys know what it's like to put an event together especially an in-person event so for us then to be able to kind of you know reap the benefits and see and understand how people appreciate it you know the appreciation that comes through in the responses um, and the excitement and you know it's it's just amazing so I'm just really excited for that because it's it's always a good feeling and it's definitely one of those moments where you're like whoa like this was this was so worth all that hard work <laughs> I love that Megan I'm curious any uh, final thoughts with Leone or the game hearse oh I'm just really excited I put it in my calendar and um I love an award show. I've been asking John for us to, you know, grow our awards program just for our members in a, in a, in a small capacity, you know, just to celebrate. So there's nothing better than a, than a party to get dressed up and put on our pretty dresses and then turn it into a slumber party with all girls. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. I'll drive the car. You need me to pick you up, take you to the next spot. I'll, I'll, I'll be the, um, your Uber driver. Brief. We're just so grateful to have you. And I'm appreciative of you guys. Uh, Leonie, um, just want to thank you. First of all, thank you for uh, being a wonderful part of the Esports Trade Association. And thank you so much um, for all you do representing, raising, and connecting women all throughout the gaming space. Thank you guys so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I already can't wait till the next Esports Next. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.